Welcome ladies and gentlemen and our salutation of the day goes to Frederick Rangira. Ladies and gentlemen, is it possible for Raila Dinga to win the presidency on these two conditions? One, without the central Kenya's a running mate. Two, without a full support of the central Kenya. This is a conversation that have been sinking after the emergence of Kalonzo Musyoka around Azimula Umoja or after Kalonzo Musyoka worked with Azimula Umoja. David Murade is saying something that is very critical. The message to Mount Kenya is that Raila is winning this election and they better decide he's winning it with them on board or winning it without them on board. If he wins, it will be without them. They know they will not have a choice in the government. That is probably the strategy of Deep Ruto. This is the latest statement from the current vice chair of Jubilee Party, David Murade. However, this understanding is not something that is new because I think even Mutahinguni once made a tweet some time back to ascertain that Raila Odinga can still win the presidency without the central Kenya getting the full backing. 2013 and 2017, the elections were actually, the narrative was built around the tyranny of numbers, where Kenyans were made to understand that the Kalenjin Kikuyu Maja is the direct ticket to presidency. But then, one of my understandings, if, if this sees the light of the day, then it's going to set a new presidency for the elections of this country. Let us look at what Mutanyi said. Raila had 44% of the vote in 2013 and 2017. It is still intact. Who needs 6% of Gemma to make Raila president? This is half of Kiambu or Akorino women only. Uru does not need Kikuyus. In fact, 84% of Gema can follow Ruto if they want to, and they will still fail. Now, this is a tweet that was done by Mutahinguni in 2020, two years ago, around, um, I think it was around, September, around October there. So it's around September or October. This tweet was alluding to what David Murada is saying now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to take keen interest because David Murade is a close associate of President Huru Kenyatta. Actually, they are friends with Huru Kenyatta. And again, David Murade is an agent of the deep state. And I want to believe that it is no denial that they are some of the operatives around the Azimula Umoja or Raila Odinga's presidential matrix. Now, if that is possible, then what can happen? What are the scenarios that are going to play out? That will be the basis of this video. But before we move further, I want to humbly request you to take a second and subscribe to this channel. Also click the notification bell. When we publish a video, you will always be notified. And also of importance, like this video, give this video a thumbs up. And so, you are going to help us increase the rating. Now, guys, even the comment section, today I'm going to look at the comment section and the next idea that I'm going to analyze will come from the comments. So tell us about this possibility. Now, I want us first to fact check whether this is possible and we want to use a baseline, not really possibility, so because my analysis is not on finality, but I'm just going to lay down how the situation is looking at with the baseline of 2017 and 2013. But before that, let me first uh, explain something on the politics, the 22, how the 22 politics have been shifting, narratives have been shifting. Deputy President formed the Hustler Movement, Hustler Nation, an idea that had a very good understanding and Kenyans really bought the concept of the Hustler Nation and it was bought because it had a very good comparative. It was, it was in comparative 
with the BBI, which was seen as one that was just creating positions, according to the proponents of the hustler nation. So when it was during the hustler and the BBI, you could see that the lines were drawn. Actually, it started the dynasty. Then when BBA came through, then it was studied against the BBI, which now means that us, it is for us, but then the BBI is for the big boys. So that, if you remember during the BBA campaigns, that is when the Hustler Nation really got its list. And that is the way people took grip of the Hustler Nation because they were actually opposing the BBI. But I feel after reggae was stopped, after the, the high court stopped the BBI, which to some extent, I think it was a blessing in this, this case, or it was a tactical, and I would be vindicated if Supreme Court returns back that BBI. It shifted from more of the hustler nation now to a bottom-up economic model. It now, because hustler nation versus dynasty versus BBI was political, then they give it economic perspective, now said that since he hustlers, let's look at our economy, then it came to the hustler, it came now to bottom up, where now we are supporting people from the lower pyramid. You remember William Root now giving the wheelbarrows to the youth groups in Karen, if you remember those photos. Huh? That's how it evolved. Now, our politics is local. And the truth of the matter here is, the idea was to create a wave that will sweep the country. And you wouldn't lie, you wouldn't bury your head in the sand that in Kenya there is something called homeboys mentality. So William Ruto reverted to the tribal, to the kingpins. Um, le let me say, let me say tribal representatives. And so that's why he went for uh, Mudavadi and Wetangula, to at least a plan to bring back the, to bring Louis on board. Then in central Kenya, he occasioned now the emergence of this the the, the, the emergence of these small parties and these small parties regrouped and this was just done deliberately to make sure that he can garner a massive support from that area all this was a matrix of bringing kikuyu on board kalinjin is on board and add something from western kenya that was the matrix but then Whatever you want to fact check might actually alter that arrangement. So let's look at it. In 2013 and 2017, and let's go at 2013, because 2013 is partly what is playing now. Mudavadi was on the other, Mudavadi was on the, was on the ballot alone, and Raila got 5.3. That was 44% against Uhuru 6.1. Then in 2017, he was with, back with Mudavadi, he got 6.7 against to Huru's 8.2. And please, let's put all the other variables constant. And what I mean here is the malpractice aspects. Because even if we were to put them into consideration, then they are on the other side of Raila Dinger. That's why I want us to, I want this to be purely on the merit of what has been, what we have been seeing. So if that has been the situation where he got uh, a percentage he got 44 44 then let's work with the worst case scenario in the mouth of uh, in the minds of david murade that really gets between 40 between 10 to 30 to 40 percent the truth of the matter is with the president supporting Raila, out of the four million in, in gamer he can bring one so if he gets 30 percent if there is a four me let's say 3.5 million turnout then Raila gets one point 2M from Gamer, that will add to his percentage or that will add to his vote bas basket if we look, if it develop, if it develop from 2017 because you know the register is also evolving, that will take him to 7.7. .7. Now, that is the first way. Secondly, but this also depends on the issue of whether Deputy President has a running mate or has a running mate on the other end. Now, two is Will he be in a position to inherit William Ruto or Uhuru Kenyatta's supporters across the country? Because Uhuru Kenyatta also got supporters in Central, in, 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 in Nyanza, in, in Rift Valley. Uh, they got supporters in Western, in Mombasa, and in the Northeastern. If there is a place 
Uhuru have really helped rallies Kisi because Kisi is now on the other side of Azimio and this uh, region have been a little bit 50-50. So if he can, if Uhuru can gather Uhuru Kenyatta's votes across the country and add up that basket to 9 million, will you think that that can give Rowena win? That is, for me, that is my projection. Because the voter register is now 22M. If it is cleaned and audited, it's going to count around 21. So we'll have around 21 registered voters. Work with the most probable turnout, then find out with yourself, can Raina win without Gamer? I'm not going to answer that question. That's for you. Ask your own question. Now, in the event that he wins without Gamer, what are some of the scenarios that are going to play out? I want us to look at that. Leaders tend to coalesce around power. And both the elected leaders that are in UDA and the other uh, Kenya Consulate parties that are outside government will be then will be then in opposition. But then, even the ones that have failed will be absorbed back in the government of the day. Now, some of these elected leaders will shift to support the government agenda because, for one thing that I have understood in this country, opposition does not exist. Opposition does not exist because politics is majorly on interests. And the elected leaders, the more you go and be in opposition and you seem not to get development, the more you are unlikely to be re-elected. So they will cross over this other side. Now, if they cross over that other side in a consequential number, then I can tell you that that would occasion the end of Kenya Kwanzaa. Even though there are many other elements that will bring the end of Kenya Kwanzaa. Look at, for example, Eden Duale. If Eden Duale loses the parliamentary seat there and Kenya Kwanzaa do not make the next government, what is his rate? If he receives a call from Raila Dinga, will he reject that call? He would actually take it because they know that the dynamics are going to change and the power now is going to shift. So if that happens, that will occasion the start of the end of Kenya Kwanzaa, even though the other, the other elements that come up. But then there's something that is happening. Eh? It is going to set a precedence. If Raila wins without a very full support from Gema, then it's going to set a presidents that you must not win with Kalenjin. You can still with other tribes converging without the support of Gema. And this is something that will work against Gema and it might work against deputy president. So in the event, this just over this presidents, in this presidents, the two options that can work out. One, William Ruto can have a shift betray all this Central Kenya team and now try to consolidate a new team in isolating the gamer. So one is try to push for a handshake with Royal Odinga, make sure you maintain, uh, you bring Kalonzo Msiak on your side, make sure you have Mudavadi and make sure you have a bit of the coast, then form a powerful force that would be facing in 2027. So that will be the ground of that betrayal. Because they will say, okay, fine, we can win without them. I've always thought that it's about Kalanjin Kikuyu. The event that William Ruto pursues this president, he will have no option but to work with another shift, the handshake with Royal and formulate the other team. So, again, he has another option to still feel like, uh, assume that new president, leave that new president and continue to form a strong opposition with the gamer team. But then that must run on a narrative that the gamer has been isolated from the government, so he is the only person that is coming to take care of their interest. However, this is something that will work against this is this is deemed to be this is deemed for a backlash because again Railo Dinga, if the there's a team will be in government, they shall have occasioned what exactly is going to happen and they will now try to uh, please the Central Kenya community, if if that is something that now the opposition will be running with. Now, lastly, if Raila wins without Gema, but Gema will be in that government, then Uhuru shall have taken charge of the Central Kenya. And he will remain now the kingpin. All these other people blabbing 
I don't think they will have a stake because Uhuru's move shall have seen the light of the day. Now, this is something that is very critical. And let me tell you why I feel this is the script. If Raila Odinga is going to take a running mate from Central Kenya, it is not that running mate to give Raila the votes. Raila will get the gamer votes because of Raila Odinga as, as an institution. It is just the call for them to vote for him, not because of the gamer. But now the running mate will be part of the succession plan post Raila. That is my analysis, guys, on scenarios that will play out if and when Raila wins with little of the gamer support and two, without necessarily a running mate. So ladies and gentlemen, you can also get to our comment section. And if you come from Gamer, you can also tell us what are your thoughts on this?